The most news in the morning. CNN's American Morning. Weekday, 6 a.m. Eastern. Let me start with you, Joe, about, first of all, what made you want to tackle the issue of teen runaways? It's a huge problem. And um, I originally started the Pimp Squad here for the NYPD in the 70s, although I'm 29. Of course. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, there I saw how these kids were exploited by these pimps, you know, the runaways, and how they died, you know, died, abused, exploited, obviously. So and many it, times they made the decision to run away, but were unable to make the decision to come back on their own because they ended up trapped. They were, they were prey. They were, they were just prey, you know, and um, exploited, obviously. And it always stayed with me, and I knew that someday, you know, when I went into private, I left the department and became a PI, that I would always go back to... Uh, to help these children. So what are the biggest keys to actually being able to find it? I mean, as you mentioned in the in introduction to your uh, TV series, this is where police hit dead ends. The private detectives like you step in. So how do you guys find these kids? Well, I mean, we're, you know, we're doing this one particular job. Obviously, you know, the police department has, doesn't have the manpower or the resources, obviously. And, uh, you know, we're skilled at what we're doing and we're, con to, you know, we're concentrating at one case at a time. And uh, it's a lot of work, but we can, we're very successful. And one of those cases was Vinny Lopez. Vinny, tell me a little bit about why you decided to run away. What was going on in your life at the time that made you feel you just had to get out of your house? Uh, well, me and my father, I guess, uh, took a turning point for bad. We, we were arguing left and right because I didn't agree with the rules of the house. I didn't like having a curfew. I wanted uh, more freedom and wasn't able to have it at 15 years old. So, um, I started to get angry and frustrated and it ended up with us arguing more. And then also we had uh, issues with the house um, with mold, so I lost a lot of my possessions. And um, at the end of it, I just decided that it's time for me to go. And what was that like for you? Um, I was lost. I, it wasn't just that, he also was involved with the wrong people, uh, na namely, not giving names, but namely his girlfriend, and uh, I just didn't want him involved with those people. Uh, a parent has to make the right choices for their child, and I said, these are the choices that I have to make for you. Did you ever think he was going to actually leave? No. No, no. Uh, I, I, no. I, we have a video right now that we want to show of how powerful it was when you were finally found by Joe and brought back to the house, and let's take a look at that reunion. When the child walks through the door, it's a bitter sweet moment. You're happy to see your child safe, but you're pissed off at what he did to you. And I imagine, and as we saw a little bit in that piece, you were emotional. You cried, uh, but then you got angry. You know, you you, some, you picked up where you left off in terms of needing to sort of iron out some of your situations. What was that like for you? Um, it still makes you tear up to see it, right? Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> me and Vinny were very close. He still is, uh, he's my best friend. I mean, it's not just a son. Father and son is more than that. You have to understand that. <laughs> this is my best friend. Uh, that's what a parent is supposed to have with their child, especially a father and son. Uh, and for him to have left, <laughs> it hurt. Um, we have a great relationship now, but um, he always had an open door. He knows that now. And uh, I believe that other children need to know that they have sources. They need to be able to speak to their parents. So. What was it like for you as well, Vinny, to know how emotional this was for your dad and how, I mean, your whole family and how torn apart they were by you leaving? Um, when I left, I didn't think it would take that big of a toll on them. I thought it would, it would be an issue for a couple of days and then it, it, it would just uh, pass over. How long were you gone? Uh, less than a month. Um, and when I got back and I saw how everybody was affected by it, everybody was hurt. Everybody was upset, and then also to see everybody relieved from when I came back. It was, I kind of, I, I took it hard, basically. How did you find him? You gotta watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> Trade secrets. Um, we, and we are going to, and I did get a chance to view it, and it really is powerful, but um, where do you get your leads, and where do you, you know, and how do you approach a child to make sure that they don't just run away from you? Well, leads obviously it's good old fashioned, old fashioned detective work, you know, having the experience, uh, and we're always prepared if a child 
does run, obviously, you know. We cover all the bases, you know, and uh, we, can't, we can't assume that he's just going to welcome us. And uh, any last words uh, from you, Israel, about uh, what you want other parents who either are going through this right now, not necessarily one of the lucky ones that has their child back, uh, or ones who are afraid that their relationship's deteriorating and that their child may run away? There are a lot of resources that they can call um, before it gets too bad. And they can definitely speak to their children, let their children know that they can speak to them. Um, there's a, a miscommunication between them at some point, the breakdown, and they need to catch it before it gets too late. Uh, they don't want to be on the other end of this. Uh, they really don't. Uh, they really do not want to be here where I am now. Um, it's sad. It's hurtful. Uh, talk to your children. Know that there is uh, a light at the end of the tunnel and, and, and your child needs uh, to know that you're there for them. You know, that's important.